All right, our first question for this week is from Scott on a mild caloric deficit. He says, you have had a ton of discussions about keto. My why for keto is tons of chronic disease and brain disease in my family tree. After hearing Dr. P Perlmutter and then reading his book Brain Grain a year ago, I decided to give keto a go. Shortly thereafter, you offered the Keto Masterclass and I've been doing it ever since. I won't really know if I hit my why for another 15 to 25 years when I'm in my 70s and 80s, so I'm gonna keep on trucking. My wife and I own 1201 CrossFit here in Elkins, West Virginia. We have tons of chronic disease and obesity here. One topic that would be helpful for us is setting macros for people. We have seen people go on severe caloric deficits and get frustrated when their bodies hold on to the weight. And in one case, we've seen the opposite where a guy lost 120 pounds on keto eating 3000 calories a day. But others struggle to lose because they probably just aren't set right calorically. You occasionally mention a mild caloric deficit and I would love to hear how you determine that. Note also that we have an in-body 530 that gives a pretty good base metabolic rate. We are thinking people should be about 500 to 1000 calories above that BMR. Do you agree? I have both of your books, been listening to your podcast for years, and even heard you speak over at the Mad Lab group and always enjoy your perspective. Scott. Awesome. Cool. Um, man, there's a lot to unpack on that, which uh, these good questions oftentimes elicit a, a good bit of unpacking. Um, four years ago, before I really started hanging out with Tyler and Luis from Keto Gains, I would have been more inclined to ascribe negative outcomes to an over, like a, he, he mentioned somewhere in here that people would stall as their bodies try to hold on because of too severe of a caloric deficit. I don't believe that anymore. Now I'm not saying that you can't screw yourself up hormonally and have some problems from an overly aggressive caloric deficit, particularly in the context of of um, hard training also, like the whole female athlete triad deal where the, you know, amenorrhea and all that type of stuff can happen. But um, I just saw time and again, Tyler and Luis, somebody would pop up on their forums and they're like, I can't lose weight, I've stalled. And it, it's pretty funny because they do a good cop, bad cop deal and they will switch hats how they do with this. And one of them would approach the person very gently and kind and the other one would kind of hammer them. But every goddamn time the person was cheating, they were they were eating far more than what they were, were reporting. There was always some emotional baggage attached to it and then a big kumbaya and everybody hugs and kisses and then the person like gets their shit together and then they're on point and, and they move forward. So as a baseline, uh, like when we ran our gym, uh, I was much more of the mind that, I don't know, maybe some low thyroid here or something. It, and it, it, that does pop up occasionally, but there, there's just kind of a reality and this is, is gauche, but nobody comes out of a concentration camp still obese. Nobody. Like it, it just doesn't fucking happen. So there is, and you, you have the most down regulated metabolism you could imagine in those scenarios because people are literally starving to death and people continue to lose weight unto the point of death. And so there's just kind of a reality that it's, it's sometimes difficult to set those things. There's all kinds of emotional um, elements to it. So I know that that wasn't really quite the specific question, but I, I would, I would, it's something to lean in on is a reality that if people are not losing weight, it is because 99.9% .9 of the time they are overeating. Now, sleep can change things, which the main thing that lack of they sleep They may not changes. be counting properly either. Like we had a client yeah. who was an attorney who, you know, was eating nuts every day and it turned out that he was eating like one of those full container, cost, uh, you know, Costco, Costco containers, containers of cashews. Yeah. So, you know, he was having his, his nuts, but so, so I guess making really, really sure that they are, they're, they're tracking and they're counting accurately. Which as well. gets back to the main question that they had, right. which is how do you set the macros? Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Honestly, the keto games macronutrient calculator is phenomenal and smart coaches could just like take the person's data, which you, you look on there, they want to know a weight, an approximate body, body fat percentage, activity level. activity level. And on the body fat percentage, if you just do a Google image search, body fat percentage, men and women, then it will order the stuff out. And if you're within like 5%, you're good. And just err on the, on the chubbier side. Mm -hmm. Like I, I it, it's really easy or 
if you have more sophisticated methods of determining body fat, fatness, then I guess that's that's fine. But that actually works really well because it's it's a starting place. Mm -hmm. Like that's where we jump in, and I would generally set the protein from that um, keto gains macronutrient calculator at the keto gains recommended, which is one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass, and then go from there. And if people need more carbs, then, then where that, that keto intervention um, sets them up, then you a, a real easy way to adjust that is uh, for every two grams of carbohydrate that you add, you delete basically one gram of fat. Math isn't exact, but it's pretty damn close. So um, that's a real easy way to to tinker all that stuff. So if the person is just uh, so they run a CrossFit gym, maybe they don't want everybody at specifically ketogenic levels, but you could use the macro the keto gains macronutrient calculator to establish a baseline of calories. And the caloric deficit that they set ends up being about ten percent below what the the maintenance level is is theoretically calculated from that um you can set it more aggressively but that that's a, a decent place to start and then again if you want more carbs in the mix than what the keto gains rec recommendations are you just need to kind of manually adjust that break that into either two or three meals a day done don't fuck around with snacks don't make it <laughs> fancy like Two meals a day is great, you know? I mean, it, it's like take the daily allotment and either divide it into equal amounts or do one 70% and do it earlier in the day and 30% later. Like you, you can really simplify this stuff. And then the person just becomes serial killer consistent. Um, you readjust those those numbers once the person's lost 10, 10 pounds or maybe like 10% of body weight. If you have a smaller person, then 10 pounds may not be as as you may have a very small female who is overweight for her scenario, but a 10 pound weight loss may be massive for them. So yeah. Did I miss anything on that? So just, uh, do you agree that they should be setting people about 500 to a thousand calories above that? The feed? basal meta, right? I haven't really ever looked at it that way. So I'm, I'm honestly not, I, I guess that that's probably. Maybe just when, see how that compares. I, to I like would. The, I, I think that the keto gains Rex would be pretty close to that. And the interesting thing is, is within the keto gains macronutrient calculator, it it uh, puts a a calculated basal metabolic rate as part of that. And again, it, it's very easy to do. You're just going to need to ask the person um, what their weight is, and then you will need to figure out body fat percentage by hook or by crook and visual and most inspection people are, are sedentary easy. like even if they're going yeah. to crossfit and doing a crossfit workout a day but the rest of their the rest of their day is sitting at a desk they're they're sedentary yeah right? i set mine as sedentary for ages i set my numbers at active to mildly and i haven't been active in years i mean even running our gym we weren't really that active and then since we have shifted to mainly like writing books and working on blogs and podcasts, like we barely get off our ass, which sucks, but that that's just kind of the, the reality of uh, like, you know, online pimping and whoring is, is <laughs> you spend a lot of time on your back or butt. So yeah. Okay. okay moving on. Moving 